Hello YouTube, this is uh, Ethan Thomas and welcome to part 4 of my series of videos on the bolt action rules. So before we start the tutorial on shooting, I um, just wanted to recommend you guys looking at uh, the links that I put in the description and uh, that will appear on the bottom of this video so that you're able to download the quick reference sheets uh, from bolt action. Uh, you'll be able to get them either from Warlord Game or Battle Mind Gaming, giving you a good summary of the rules and also uh, the different modifiers that we'll be, we'll be looking at uh, during this tutorial. So, hope you enjoy. Thanks. So tonight we'll go over the shooting mechanics uh, between infantry. The setup for the board right now is we've got the Americans here with an eight-man squad, seven riflemen and one NCO with a Thompson. And over the wall we've got the Germans, seven riflemen with one NCO with a small machine gun. Now let's just say that I've drawn a dice for the Americans and we'll give these guys an order to fire on the Germans. The first thing to look at with your, with your squad when firing is the grouping. It doesn't matter if they're grouped like in two rows or in one row, all of these units will be able to fire upon the Germans. Uh, the bolt action rules take into effect that uh, the guys inside the same squad are able to position themselves accordingly. Now, in the case where I would have another American squad just behind the first one, this squad wouldn't be able to fire upon the Germans because of this squad in front of it. The basic role to hit an opponent when firing is 3 plus on a dice. But there are some modifiers that we, we will have to take into effect. First off, we need to see if the firer has moved. In this case here, doesn't matter because we gave them a fire option so they didn't do an advance move before but also we have to take in consideration that this is the American army so even though I would have given them an advance order because of their national rule run and gun this means that the American riflemen and auto rifles do not suffer a minus one when given an advance order and firing now let's look at the range of the squad the rifles from the American squad is less than 12 inches from the Germans. When firing on an opponent, when you are over half of the maximum range of your weapon, you suffer a minus one. In this case here, the rifles have a range of 24 inches. Being less than 12, we're less than half of the maximum range of their rifles. Therefore, they are not penalized by minus one. In the case of the NCO that has a Thompson machine gun, his maximum range is 12 inches. Therefore, we're over half of his maximum range. He will suffer a minus one penalty on his dice. Finally, the Germans are behind cover. They're behind a wall. So this wall can be considered as hard cover. Hard cover provides a minus two penalty on the firer. So therefore, the rifles will having a three plus minus two for the hard cover, the rifleman will need five plus to hit. Whereas the NCO having a minus one already for the range and minus two for the wall will need sixes to hit. So let's roll some dice. First, we'll, we'll start with the NCO. The NCO has a Thompson machine gun, so he will roll two, two dices. He needs sixes, and he misses. Now, we'll roll seven dices for the rifleman. We need five pluses. So we get two sixes. So 
The American squad got two hits on the Germans. The Germans will suffer a pin. And we'll look at the pin later on. Now we'll determine to see if we've wounded or caused any casualties to the Germans. The German infantry is regular infantry. Regular infantry needs a 4 plus to be able to cause a casualty. If this infantry was inexperienced, we would need 3 plus. If it was a veteran, we would need a 5 plus. So they're regular, we need 4 plus. And we cause one casualty. Now, because we didn't roll a 6, we don't have massive damage. In the case where we would have a 6, we would then re-roll again. And if we would have rolled another 6, we could actually choose the uh, model that we would want to discard. So in this case here, we didn't. So we'll t discard this model here. Now, let's say that we've drawn a dice for the Germans. We'll give the Germans a fire order. Now, before we start rolling some dice, we need to see if the German squad here will activate on our order. Why? Because it has a pin. When a squad or a unit hasn't suffered a pin, it doesn't need to pass a morale test to see if it will activate. But in this case here, because we do have a pin, we need to check our morale. So, the regular infantry has a morale of 9. Because of the pin, we suffer a minus one. So we'll need less than eight to actually activate the Germans. And we get a nine. Therefore, the Germans wouldn't activate. But for example purposes, let's reroll. And we get a seven. So that means that the Germans are actually able to fire we take off the pin here and we're able to roll to see if we hit anything. So let's start with the NCO. Well, the NCO has a small machine gun like the Thompson from the uh, American side. Uh, he will suffer a minus one because of the range. We're more than half the maximum distance uh, of, his, uh, of his gun being 12 inches. Therefore, we will need four pluses. And he misses. Now we'll, we'll shoot with our rifleman. The rifleman will need three plus because they're less than 12 inches away from the Americans. So they don't suffer a minus one for their range. And second, they haven't moved. So they didn't suffer anything for an advance order. And finally, the Americans aren't behind cover. So we need three plus and we get three hits. So we've gotten three hits and now let's determine if the Americans will suffer any casualties because the Americans are also regular infantry. We will need four plus and we get two casualties and two massive damages. So let's see if we're able to actually pick out the models that we want to discard. We re-roll those two sixes and we get a six. By getting a six, I'm able to actually choose the model that I want to discard. In this case here, I will want to discard the NCO and a rifleman. This means what? Well, first off, because we actually hit the Americans, the Americans suffered one pin, and by losing their NCO, they will suffer a permanent second pin. So the Americans are now at two pins. Now this means that next turn, when we will start drawing new dices, when we'll draw an American dice to actually activate this quad, we will need to roll for morale because it has suffered two pins. So regular uh, infantry is nine minus two. That means we'll need seven and less to actually pass the morale test for the Americans. And in this case here, we would have passed it. We have a six. So this covers the basics of shooting and pinning for infantry. Hope you enjoyed. 
and I'll see you in part five.